Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. So, uh, looking at the uh, data for the week ahead and the macros and what's uh, coming up on the 20th of March or from the 20th of March. Um, after last week's turmoil, investors will be uh, or will continue to monitor the situation in the banking sector and await monetary policy decisions from major central banks such as the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the SMB, the Swiss National Bank and Norges Bank. Also in the spotlight will be inflation figures for Japan, the UK and Canada and the ZEW economic index for Germany. Uh, finally, PMI data for the US, Japan, UK, Euro area, Germany and France should provide some details um, about the health of the manufacturing and services sector in March and that's always important because uh, the main um, data points that we're looking at in terms of understanding currency movements um, and strength um, and weakness or appreciation and devaluation is uh, GDP and inflation. Those are the two um, real main um, macroeconomic data points that you want to look towards also as well, um, in Australia, if you're trading the Australian dollar, uh, in Australia, all eyes will be on the PMI data for March and the minutes from the RBA's latest meeting as it will signal how close the cash rate is to its peak. The cash rates basically uh, being um, interest rates. And so all central banks now are ending their, hike, their hiking cycle. Um, so um, it just depends on... Uh, really what the economy is doing as well as uh, inflation if there's more of an inflation threat but um, this year you're probably going to see all central banks now start to end their hiking cycle and even there are rumours of um, some central banks looking to cut by the end of the year or the market thinks that they might cut uh, by the end of the year so uh, we'll get into that a bit later so um, starting off on the dollar index and all the dollar index is is just a measure of uh, dollar strength against the basket of currencies and um, uh, before actually before we get into the dollar index um, it's important to understand um, risk on and risk off uh, when it comes to investing um, and investing uh, or trading because ultimately um, you know, it's, it's the big money that moves the markets, right? Retail are not really moving the markets. So um, in a risk off, uh, what is risk on and risk off? And risk on, risk off is an investment setting in which price behavior responds to and is driven by changes in, in, in investor risk tolerance. So risk on, risk off refers to changes in investment activity in response to global economic patterns. So during periods when risk is perceived as low, the risk on risk off theory states that investors tend to engage in higher risk investments when risk is perceived to be high investors have the tendency to gravitate towards lower risk investments and so uh, this might make it a bit clearer when it comes to risk sentiment if you're not understanding just yet while asset uh, prices ultimately detail the risk sentiment of the market, investors can often find signs of changing sentiment through corporate earnings, macroeconomic data, right, in Forex, we look towards, again, um, GDP and inflation data, global central bank action, right, interest rates, monetary policy and statements, and other factors. So risk on environments are often carried by a combination of expanding corporate earnings, optimistic economic outlook, accommodative central bank policies and speculation. We can also assume that in, an increase in the stock market, uh, sorry, that an increase in the stock market is a sign that risk is on. As investors feel the market is being supported by strong influential fundamentals, they perceive less risk about the market and its outlook. Conversely, risk off environments can be caused by widespread corporate earning downgrades contracting or slowing economic data uncertain central bank policy a rush to safe havens and other factors just like the stock market rises relating to a risk on environment environment a drop in the stock market equals a risk off environment that's because investors want to avoid risk and are averse to it so when you think about what we're in right now in terms of a risk on or risk off environment you would have to say risk off right and that then should um, indicate uh, really what 
way you should be trading in terms of whether it's, you know, Forex and certain Forex currencies that respond to risk on and risk off, whether it's, you know, the stock market, whether it's commodities, etc. And so uh, risk on and risk off isn't necessarily a light switch. It's not one day risk on, one day risk off. There are varying degrees of risk on and risk off. You know, the most extreme um, risk off environment would be, for example, the 2008 financial crash or more recently you got the uh, COVID um, spread of COVID in the lockdowns, um, the Ukraine and Russia you know, war that's going on. Um, but one thing I will say is that most risk off scenarios eventually um, um, basically sort themselves out, right? Because as humans, we want to, you know, solve the problem. We don't want to be in a risk off environment forever, right? And so, um, you know, it's understandable that it is a scale. There are varying degrees and we have to understand what the market is more focused on and whether they're looking even past some risk off um, you know, events and environments and more focused on, in fact, looking at the opportunity to actually look for bargains and cheap prices. But at the moment, it looks like we're definitely more risk off than risk on. And so SVB sends tremors across the banking landscape. The commercial real estate sector is looking especially risky right now. So the knock on effect from SVB is being is being felt in all sectors. So the Fed to consider a pause as fallout from SVB roils the markets. The UK, Switzerland, Norway, Nigeria, Philippines may hike and Brazil, Turkey will probably hold rates this week. Now, the Federal Reserve officials face their biggest challenge in months as they weigh whether to keep raising rates, interest rates this week to cool inflation or take a pause amid the market turmoil fueled by recent bank failures and it's a tough situation that they're in because they have a mandate in order to bring inflation back to their two percent target but they can't keep hiking rates aggressively to bring inflation down because the knock-on effect from hiking rates is that you know you're getting uh, things break right um, borrowing and lending costs go higher and this is one of the things with SVB Bank is that we're seeing um, the effect of hiking interest rates is that, uh, you know, if banks um, haven't you know done good business or done their risk, um, risk analysis and risk assessment and done bad investments, then rising interest rates can affect um, many businesses, not just banks. So um, before the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and the resulting fallout, Fed policymakers were poised to raise rates as much as 50 basis points after a string of data suggested the economy was much stronger than officials thought at the beginning of the year, right? <clears throat> so when the economy is strong, or perceived to be strong, rate hikes um, uh, are appropriate because um, uh, the economy can withstand um, higher borrowing and lending costs. But if it's not, then it can't. And if it can't, you know, the cracks start to show. And this is what's happened with SVB Bank. Now, given the financial market volatility, many Fed watchers expect a smaller quarter point uh, increase. And some say the U.S. Central Bank will pause altogether after a two day meeting that starts on Tuesday. And so, again, um, you know, the uh, the economy contracting SVB Bank, um, you know, it's very hard for central banks to continue hiking now. Um, I think that if the um, central bank, the Federal Reserve, uh, don't hike rates, I can see the dollar um, really kind of falling at least down to the 101s at a bare minimum, possibly beyond that, because I think the majority of the market is probably factoring in the 25 basis point hike, um, and that's really been priced in, I think, probably between that uh, low and that high is um, where, you know, the uh, 25 basis point hike, 50 basis point hike has probably been priced in and the valuation of the dollar. But I think um, possibly we could see prices come down here and maybe beyond uh, that if there is a hold. So we could come down to maybe the, the 100s and even probably maybe beyond that. But um, let's see, I think the dollar could still be a a short-term buy um, if there is a 25 basis point hold I mean I see a hold but um, but hike right 
and also as well with the dollar actually being um, a currency that benefits in a risk off environment yes SVB bank um, you know is obviously an American bank and risk off is emanating from uh, the US but typically um, risk off should um, support the dollar so any I think any pullbacks down to you know these are 103s 102s um, a buying opportunity is not necessarily buying the, the, the dollar index but you know correlating to um, going to uh, another uh, pairs other pairs like for example the I don't know the dollar cad is one of one of the pairs that I would look to buy um, if prices come down to this uh, this 102 area and then looking for some positive um, price action and then if you know you see uh, the dollar cad in a demand zone then I'll look for you know uh, confluence and buyers on that dollar cad as we're on down at this zone on the dollar index and so that's where we are with the dollar um, but again I think uh, if they hold if they uh, don't uh, high crates by any um, uh, they pretty much just hold rates, then I do think that uh, the dollar should sell off. The dollar yen, the dollar yen in a risk off environment, the yen is a risk off currency. And so um, you're seeing what's happened over the past couple of weeks, SVB bank prices uh, going to the downside. That's no uh, surprise there. So what we do have right now is technically a supply zone right there and so any pullbacks into a supply zone are buying opportunities potentially for the yen against the dollar um, me personally as well i tend not to do um, any buying unless uh, we are at least at a bare minimum around the moving fair value which traders would know as moving fair um, uh, um, uh, moving average but I uh, refer to the moving average as a moving fair value because ultimately the average is telling you the mean the mean is the uh, is fair value between a bargain and an expensive price 50% of that is fair value right and if you're looking at uh, moving averages, moving averages are just telling you the average, right? The average or the mean between a certain period. Now, one of the indicators or the settings that I use is the 21 period, which is basically the monthly uh, moving fair value. So ultimately, I'm looking at the market uh, at least at the bare minimum. I'm looking at uh, buying at fair value, preferably, obviously, bargains and cheap prices, but you know, if you're buying, for example, uh, looking to trade in and around this zone here, yeah, and fair value, monthly moving fair value is up here, then I consider that to be, you know, expensive. Right? It's expensive because I'm buying the uh, the yen, right? Which means I've got to go short. So for me, um, once the moving fair value starts to come down, prices come up to the moving fair value, then I know at least. Um, from an indication perspective, I'm buying at fair value and I'm not buying um, the, the yen at an expensive area or expensive prices, which is the reason why I always wait for pullbacks because I did get a, a question asking why I wait for pullbacks. Because you always want to look for the best prices and not for uh, not just to just you know buy uh, at highs and sell at lows, right? That's not really what you should be doing. Anyways, any pullbacks into uh, supply zones um, with uh, the moving fair value, the monthly moving fair value. You can use the weekly if you want to, but I personally don't. Um, and uh, and so for me, if I'm looking to get involved in this, the first area is going to be the supply zone, but in alignment with that monthly moving fair value. And anything above that monthly moving fair value is considered, you know, a bargain price, right? So any pullbacks, and that would be my preference on the uh, the uh, dollar yen. You can look for buy trades if you really want to, um, you know, down at these lows. But um, I think the path of least resistance on that dollar yen is still going to be to the uh, to the downside. 
overall. Uh, dollar Swiss, and we did come down uh, last week into this zone. This is seen as obviously a bargain price. If you look to the left, bargain, prices went higher, prices come down, we had a bargain. This was also driven by um, the uh, Credit Suisse as well, but I think overall in the risk-off environment, both uh, currencies should potentially kind of cancel themselves out. I can't imagine this trending. I think if this does trend uh, to the to the downside, it will be either because the Federal Reserve has have held rates and not uh, hiked rates by twenty five basis points, or if um, you know they basically hike by fifty basis points, which no one is really expecting. Um, the Swiss National Bank are also going to be. Uh, looking at uh, hiking by 50 basis points. So um, ultimately, I would actually expect the Swiss franc to actually probably strengthen slightly uh, over the US dollar. But ultimately, it's not really a pair I'm interested in anymore. Um, uh, about a week or two ago, I was more interested or before the SVB bank uh, um, uh, situation, risk off situation, I was more looking at buying the dollar. But now, um, you know, it's not really a pair that I'm interested in. But if you are, that's a decent area to look for any kind of short trades or even just a bit higher up if you're looking to buy the Swiss franc, if you're looking to buy the dollar, this level now has been touched once already. So um, it's not necessarily the greatest area of demand. You'd have to probably look for a lower area, which would be somewhere um, around the 90s, uh, was that 1950 area. Dollar CAD. Now I'm looking to get into the dollar CAD. If I'm, um, if the dollar, if the Federal Reserve do hike by 25 basis points, so um, any pullbacks into that demand zone, alongside the monthly moving fair value, then that's going to be decent, a decent buy for me. Um, but that's only if they kind of hike by a certain. Um, by the 25 basis points. If they don't, then all bets are off pretty much on this uh, currency pair. I'd probably look to buy, if I'm looking to buy anything, maybe somewhere you know down at the one three twos. Because I'd expect the dollar to you know to, to kind of sell off. And we could even actually come all the way down eventually to uh, the one thirties as well. Um, Buying the Canadian dollar really isn't uh, an option as they are not hiking at all. They're actually on a holding, um, the holding period, but there have been talks that they could, in fact, hike rates if inflation does start to peak, but it doesn't look like it at the moment. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and again, I think from a risk off perspective, you would really want to buy the US dollar. Um, so any sales anticipation, decent, Again, it's really going to be about whether the Fed um, hike by 25 basis points or hold. So, um, and if you want to get in in anticipation of uh, potentially a Fed hike, then now is a decent time, or maybe a bit higher up into you know this supply zone before anticipating um, uh, a drop in the New Zealand dollar. Because again, in the risk on environment, or sorry, risk off environment, you'd have to you know. Uh, they have to but you'd uh, expect the US dollar to increase in value and the commodity currencies like um, the New Zealand dollar and Australian dollar to decrease in value but again I think at the moment uh, I think everyone's kind of on, on pause um, in terms of understanding what the Fed are going to do uh, pound dollar and the pound is um, a bit of a Bit of a strange one, but I do think that although they're going to hike, um, the expectation is that it's going to be basically a one and done. And Goldman Sachs says the US, uh, sorry, the UK inflation to sink below Bank of England's two percent goal this year. And if it does, then the Bank of England are less likely to uh, to hike because they see inflation coming back down towards the 2% target, so they don't need to uh, hike to push it, right? So the UK inflation will sink below the Bank of England's 2% target by the end of the year if the £2,500 household energy bill cap is extended at this week's budget, according to Goldman Sachs, and I think it was. And so the US Bank 
bank's economist um, predicted a rapid fall in the inflation rate from double digits to 1.8 later this year after the plunge in natural uh, gas prices. It's lower than any inflation projection for the fourth quarter in Bloomberg survey and well below the current, C, uh, current rate sorry, of 10.1%. So that will be um, quite amazing if that does happen, if inflation does fall below the 2% target. And I think the Bank of England, I think all central banks would actually uh, love that. So ultimately, if <clears throat> the Bank of England, you know, hike one more time and then that's it, um, whereas the US dollar hike, you know, maybe a couple more times, maybe 25 at the next meeting and maybe another 25 basis points at the next meeting. Then, uh, and also as well, the fact that, you know, maybe SVB and the contagion is kind of held. I do think, in fact, this area here uh, could be uh, currently and also at the highs would actually be the limit of the move. I can't see prices really going beyond that 125 area. And if it does, I'm looking for some sort of a stop hunt around that area uh, to, to look for shorts. But again, uh, that would be dependent upon um, the Federal Reserve as well as uh, risk sentiment. And in a risk off environment, the pound shouldn't really do, um, do well. It's more of a risk on currency than a risk off. But if you do want to buy the, uh, the pound, then you're looking at really, I think, a pullback down to... Oh, it's a bit of a wide zone here. Yeah. You'll have to kind of look for a, a pullback down within that zone. And when you get a wide zone like that, best thing to do is to look for some support and resistance within that zone as well. So first pullback, if you're looking for a deeper pullback will be around the 119s uh, before looking at getting long as we've had level level that's been business has been done around there so that would be the first and then the absolute low of that demand zone before looking at getting long the euro dollar right so euro dollar my bias is as was actually for um a long uh trading you can see that this level has uh actually held really nice and that was really where we were so um the euro is probably one of the most hawkish central banks, but economists no longer expect the ECB rates to reach 4% after turmoil. So again, um, risk off sentiment is um, causing central banks to kind of rethink how aggressive they are with hiking rates. So economists predict uh, the European Central Bank will stop raising rates before they reach 4%, a scenario that has, uh, was widely expected and priced in by investors until just a week ago so again the change in outlook comes from the collapse of silicon valley bank in the us and uh, troubles at credit suisse group ag through markets in a tailspin raising the specter of a fresh financial crisis the ecb on thursday followed through on plans to raise borrowing costs by another 50 basis points though didn't offer any guidance on future policy path so banks including goldman sachs barclays now predict only two more quarter point moves and would take that and that would take the deposit rate to 3.5%. Morgan Stanley and ABN AMRO are among those expecting a slightly higher terminal rate of 3.75. So you can see what Goldman, Morgan Stanley, Deutsche Bank, um, and this is what they're basically expecting. You see Barclays, you see Nordea, ING. So again, this is because um, as explained, risk off, the economy, um, uh, global economy really kind of contracting and the fallout from SVB. And so um, hiking when um, you've got contracting economy could make things a whole lot worse. But saying that, I think the euro is in a slightly better place than the US in terms of um, you know uh, the uh, the risk off sentiment and the bank. Although Credit Suisse um, is is also a problem, but um, I still have a more of a long bias on the euro over the dollar. Not necessarily the best trade uh, for the euro, but if I was looking to buy one or the other, it would probably be more of the euro at the moment. But um, you know you've seen basically a lot of buying, you know, by the uh, by the institutions. And so that's kind of validated um, the point. But if we get any pullbacks, I think.
think you know, that, that would be a decent buying opportunity uh, for the euro. Now, again, it depends upon um, whether the US dollar hold. If you're in this uh, uh, buy from anywhere around here, if the US and Federal Reserve do hold rates, then um, you can expect prices to really kind of go up to probably these 109 areas. Um, looking at the Australian dollar, US dollar, and again, in a risk off environment, you would have to say the US dollar would be the, um, the buy. Um, but Australia at the moment potentially is being supported by China and uh, China's zero uh, COVID um, policies, meaning that they are coming out of their, uh, their COVID lockdown. So why China's uh, central bank has to cut is, uh, its required reserve ratio so China cut its uh, required reserve ratio today by 25 basis points we think is partly to help the economy and provide a cushion against global market turmoil and so uh, China's central bank the people's bank of China cut its required reserve by 25 25 basis points to 10.5 percent this releases yuan liquidity of 500 billion and so all it is is basically saying that there's a required ratio that banks have to hold on reserve and they've lowered that now so the banks um, can actually um, don't have to hold as much in reserve and so they've uh, uh, the banking sector can actually uh, support the um, the economy right and so um, if China continue to grow Australia are China's one of China's biggest trade partners and so um, if China are uh, less affected by the um, banking crisis that's going on in the West, um, then that should hopefully support the Australian dollar, which is basically what we're seeing um, at the moment. <clears throat> of course, nothing is for certain. And if it does, you know, the risk off does become um, a global um, event, then you probably may, may see uh prices come down to the 64 area but um, if China continue to uh, grow and uh, their, their economy then I think that the uh, Australian dollar should want to benefit from that as well as the New Zealand dollar as well and gold gold um, you know rocketing up this is again to be expected and uh, there was a nice buying opportunity a couple of weeks ago I've been saying pretty much for um, a whole year that go back from my past videos that the smart money were looking to buy central banks were doing the most buying um, of any period of gold uh, last year summer and uh, in anticipation for what is going on so um, what, what may was going to be forecasted and um, this is pretty much uh, <laughs> what's, what's happened right the smart money buy here and in anticipation of, of, of what's uh, happening. So uh, any pullbacks into a demand zone, I think is decent. Again, wait for, for me anyway, I'd wait for any kind of um, pullbacks into fair value as well in order for me to uh, want to get uh, long in that, in that zone. Um, if you're looking to buy the dollar, then you're looking to short gold and um, you'll be looking to short gold probably right now that's if you think that the dollar is going to strengthen i can't see the dollar really strengthening too much over the medium to long term in fact the dollar is forecasted to um weaken towards second half of the year and so i think any pullbacks on gold if you're looking to trade this um are decent buying opportunities especially if you get back down to the uh, uh, 1820s which looks an absolute bargain right now right People don't recognize bargains until you see the highs. And so all of a sudden it becomes firmer. We've got to buy gold, got to buy gold. And, um, <laughs> you know, whereas a smart money buy low, sell high, you know, retail tend to want to FOMO in after after the fact. And you won't know, um, you know, whether to buy or sell and what is likely to happen in the future if you don't understand, you know, fundamentals and, you know, risk on, risk off, row, row. Yeah what they call Roro investing, risk on, risk off investing. 
and this is really what drives you know prices this wasn't you know predicted by any kind of uh, indicators this is what um you know the investors are looking at in terms of you know the fundamental side of things anyways um that's it for this week i hope you have a great trading week and uh take care speak to you all soon